This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Yeah, found that out last night, um, and it yeah, things seem to be aligned that way that, that he would be making visits for the Razorbacks. I think it was imperative that Sam acted quickly because people were worried about those four-star tight ends, um, and you want to give them some assurance. Here's the thing. You do a small amount of research on Morgan Turner, and you see, I mean, Stanford touted itself or touts itself as tight end you. Um, my Falcons in the Super Bowl 51 uh, had – uh, both Austin Hooper and Levine Toilolo from the Stanford roster. You got Zach Ertz. Um, you got uh, Kobe Fleener. I mean, they've had a succession during Turner's 10 years there as the tight ends coach. They've had one after the other. Uh, not only excel, excel in college, but go on into the league, too. Yep. That was in, well, the track record of success at Stanford with tight ends, the way you just referred to. It's, uh, it's pretty widespread. We're talking with Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Whole Hog Sports this morning. Uh, Tom, another coaching news. You've got Mississippi State making the permanent decision on Zach Arnett. He's going to take over as their head coach. Kind of a a situation for athletics director, interim athletics director. uh, I think it's Brocky Brett, something like that. What did you think about that move that was also made yesterday? Well, I I think what it does is it it gives the Mississippi State family some cohesion um and it, you know to make it that quickly certainly help with the current roster i i don't know how well like zach arnett is by you know the, the full roster of players there but uh, you know they play a in a very aggressive brand of defense um you think about the arkansas game the way they crashed down from the edges on those goal line plays kept arkansas from getting in the end zone um i know that people saw um, Arnett as being a, you know, an up and comer, um, and and so I think what it does, it's it's a four year deal. So you know, if it succeeds, if they do pretty well, they can extend that. But for the time being, I, I think it's a pretty good measure um, to, you know, kind of move past the, the tragedy of, of Mike Leach, Mike Leach's passing. And I bring a, you bring that up, and I was thinking about this late last night. So Arnett gets named the head coach, and I know Arkansas is still looking for its defensive coordinator. Tom, it's going to be used against the Razorbacks' negative recruiting that they still don't have a D.C. supposedly. Is there any coach that you think would have the actual gall and stupidity to negative recruit against Mississippi State based on what happened to Mike Leach? Um, I don't know. Uh, I did see Stephen Robertson's post yesterday that he's hearing some talk of that. Um, I'm, recruiting is a is a tough, tough deal. It's cutthroat, man. Um, it is very cutthroat. In various ways, coaches reach out and try to see if guys want to transfer. I mean, it's just it's just part of the deal. Um, you, you would have hoped there was a grace period surrounding the Mike Leach deal, but I, I don't know. I hesitate to speculate on what might or might not have happened with uh, any – talking to players at Mississippi State or third parties doing that. Um, you know, Razorback fans were quite upset when Mike Woods transferred to Oklahoma. They felt like there might have been some shady stuff going on there. But what is the NCAA in position to do now? They wanted the players to have more latitude yeah. to move, and, you know, that's part of it. And then when you – with that, all this stuff hitting at once, NIL, transfer portal, and everything, it just seems like – Tommy, you and I have talked about it quite a lot. Um, the NCAA isn't equipped right now to handle everything that's going on. Nope. You know, Arkansas has had players into the portal. Trey Knox, kind of the latest on the offensive side. What What do you think is at the root of, you know, a, a wide receiver, a tight end? You know, there's been 16 players, I think, now enter the portal with Knox. What What do you think is at the root? Some of them you explain away they didn't get playing time. Someone like Knox got plenty of playing time. Uh, what do you think is at the root of some of these impactful players that are leaving the Arkansas roster? Well, I, I believe every move has its own individual stories, and so there's different motivations. I'm sure a lot of it was playing time. Some of it was, hey, we've got a lot of guys at your position. You might want to find another place. And then, you know, with Trey Knox, um, maybe, <clears throat> you know, the fact that Dowell Loggins has gone to South Carolina – the man who recruited him here, Justin Stepp, is at South Carolina. 
I'm not saying he's going there, but it kind of makes sense. You wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so, so wouldn't be surprised at all. So a, a greener pasture type deal for him or, or guys that he's, you know, he, he's close to. So um, I, I'm going to miss Trey Knox because I thought he was a fantastic kid, uh, a cheerful, exuberant guy, always kind of on point with his interviews and honest. And um, I'm going to miss that. I, I kind of posted a tweet when it became, a, you know, announced that he was doing this, that um, from the last five years, I mean, there's been some, there's been some great interview guys come through. Hayden Henry comes to mind. You know, Grant Morgan, always a good, thoughtful interview. And uh, there's been others, yeah. but uh, I, I really enjoyed Trey Knox. You know, yesterday was one of the days Chuck's on with us and, and he said something I think is insightful. And you stop and think about how much time Trey Knox has left to make an impact as a tight end. You know, if you're a pass catcher, wide receiver, tight end, whatever, being in an offense that's going to throw it 45 times a game's got to be an an attractive thing you're looking for. Arkansas is not an offense that routinely is going to throw it 40 plus times in a ball game. And I think for a pass catcher that's looking to have one more season, particularly with with considering Knox's career path starting at wide receiver, moving to tight end, you don't have a year to waste, so to speak. Yeah, there's. I think there's some truth in that. And when you think about Arkansas's offense right now, um, they are. I mean, it, and when you look at the numbers, it's, it's very balanced. But a lot of schools, um, you know, you're going to have a little bit more passing. And Arkansas's top guys, and that that would have been in the, the last year, Hazelwood, Landers. They yeah. they racked up good numbers, and then Trey Knox was in there, and uh, Rocket Sanders caught some out of the backfield. But your fourth and fifth guys, so uh, you know, Warren Thompson. And um, Keytron Jackson, mm. their numbers weren't quite up there. And so maybe Keytron Jackson wants double the targets he got or maybe even more than double the targets. Uh, he'll have to go prove himself to rise up into somebody's top two or three receivers. Um, and I think he would have been in position to do that for next year's Razorbacks. So that one was a bit of a head-scratcher for me. Uh, but, again, everyone has their own motivations, backstories, and what have you. Um, uh, and, and I think Arkansas is going to be able to recruit talented wide receivers, but they also have to, and this, this is the problem coaches are having across the country now, is, is, is developing your younger talent. Um, you know, you want to see, and Isaiah Satania make a huge move next year, uh, but meanwhile, you've got some big openings at receiver that you're trying to fill with, um, with uh, portal guys. So uh, it's, a, it's a tough balance right now, and coaches are strung in, in December, I can't imagine how strung out these coaches are in trying to, you know, <laughs> fulfill staff positions, recruit the portal, hold on to your commitments, and then recruit for coming years. It's, it is a quite the handful. They are earning their money, no question about it. Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% well Welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet online where the game starts.